Well, we just got our first signs of a power outage. It came off for maybe half a second. Not, not too long. Nothing to worry about just yet, but. All right, everybody. We got our battery charger in the mail today. We got a lithium iron 40 amp battery charger from Red Odo. Please read user manual before use. Nice looking box here. I like their, I like their style. And I like that they put tons of padding in, in with everything. All right, there it is, big boy, 40 amp, big old battery charger. I like the sleek design on this. Nice carrier, easy to carry around package. Got a cooling fan, power switch. Couple indicators, voltage readout. No settings or anything to mess with. You just hook it up and charge it. That's pretty nice. So, battery charger with the, uh, I believe this is called a 50 amp Anderson power pole connector or a quick disconnect battery connector. I do like the quick disconnect on that. It makes it easy to move around, relocate if you need to. Got your manual, how to connect, negative, positive. Talks about the charging modes, protection functions, maintenance and use precautions, LED indicator, protection functions. Troubleshooting, product features. Pretty good little manual there. Okay, I think I'll put the battery right over here. I'm gonna make a little shelf so it gets it up off the wet floor Since the door leaks pretty good. I tried sealing it up didn't work So I'll make a little shelf elevated up off the floor just a bit just a simple wooden thing I'll make another part to put the inverter on and the charger. We'll have ourselves a little power station So I can power my PC and keep everything running when I need it to keep running I'll give it a good test run Let's see how we like it. All right, we got four legs and three shelves. One foot by three feet. Pre-drilled the legs and marked some lines so I know where to set the shelf. All right, we got ourselves a three-tier shelf. Beautiful battery, look at that thing. 400 amp hours in just one package. So put those there so I don't lose them. And see these little cover caps. Also save those. Put them in the box. And then we got our battery charger. Same thing, really nice packaging, so we'll save the box and all of the the foam. Oh, that big boy. Power cable. 
battery cable. Um, make sure that doesn't get lost. Okay, I got the inverter, got the 2200 watt pure sine wave, continuous 4400 watt peak. I like the nice thick cable on the battery side. Heavy duty. Uh, it's a good thing this plug is marked because they use brown and blue. So brown is positive. Be very careful not to short out your battery terminals with your wrench. Just get these snug. Don't want to go too tight on those. Going to just give it its first charge and uh, see how long that takes. Make sure everything goes good. Okay, got a connection on the back for the power. A switch connected. Make sure you don't block the fan on the back. Charger's hooked up. Slip it on. Thirteen point one volts. All right, we're charging. Charging at forty point seven amps. I like the readout. Got point twenty C uh, capacity. This thing knows how much capacity this has. That's a fancy charger. I like it. Yeah, super quiet fan. This thing is nice. Okay, cap is capacity. Not the current capacity of the battery. It's the capacity that has been charged to the battery. 2.44C is the capacity that's been charged to the battery. Hmm. Ooh, those cables are getting warm. Definitely got 40 amps running through there. Let's see what my multimeter says. Got 40.7 amps on this. Oh, 40.7 up here too. Sweet, we got a good readout. Right, put a hold on that. 40.7 amps. Now 40.7 amps. Charger doing a really good job at staying cool. I don't feel any warmth coming off of this. Cable's getting warm though. Nothing to worry about. Just uh, charging at maximum amps. It's freaking awesome. I really like the setup. Red Odo, check them out. I got some links below if you want to buy yourself a Red Odo battery. Get you ready for the power outages. High efficiency, small size and lightweight, 
the charger control circuit adopts advanced LLC half bridge resonant soft switching power supply control technology with suitable structure and good thermal design to make the charger small, light, and with good portability. Exclusive pre-charge mode number two. Switching power supply type and microcontroller control charging technology make the charger have an exclusive pre-charge mode which can activate the battery, repair long unused or deeply sleeping battery, and extend its life. Number three, high reliability. The charger is composed of high quality military and industrial grade components and the advanced circuit design and strict production process according to ISO 9001-2008. Quality management system make the charger low failure rate, high reliability, and long service life. Number four, multiple protection functions. The charger is reliable and has multiple protection functions, such as over temperature protection, output short circuit protection, reverse polarity connection protection, and output over voltage protection to prevent damage from faulty operation. Aluminum alloy shell, number five. Charger shell is made of aluminum alloy with surface oxidation treatment, making it to be high grade, good heat dissipation capacity, high hardness, anti-oxidation, no fading. Pretty awesome little charger there. Got military grade components in it, apparently. Moving a lot of air, but the fan is super quiet. Multiple readout on the display. Not only that, it's accurate readout. I don't see that too often. It's actually putting out what it says it's putting out. It's still going at 40 amps. 40.7 amps. The cord is warm, but not in a bad way. Just moving a lot of power. Okay, we've been charging for one hour now. Still going strong. Still charging at 40.7 amps. Capacity is at 41.7. Charged capacity or whatever that is. 13.9 volts. You see that? All right, we're at two full hours now. Mm, actually, two hours and 10 minutes. Um, still going strong. We are at 88.4 C on the capacity there. 14 volts. Still charging at 40.7 amps. Cables are still a little warm. Which is fine. Everything going good. Alright, we're going on four hours now. And that uh, we got 161 on capacity. I don't see a decimal point there anymore. 14.1 volts. Still charging at 40.7 amps. All right, six hours in. I think we are close to being fully charged. I think maybe half hour ago it shut down charging and uh, just started back up at the six hour mark. So I think it's some type of charging mode toward the end of its charge cycle here. So yeah, I think we're just about done at six hours charging from, uh, I think it was 13.1 volts. Fourteen point four. Oh, 14.6. Looks like we just got to full. All right, six hours. I had a little maintenance charge there at the end or something. 13.8 volts, full battery. Added in an outlet for the inverter, so I have an easy place to connect to it. Now we just got some battery cables to put on. All right, I got the battery cables hooked up, positive and negative. Got an inline fuse there, 250 amp. Goes up to a disconnect switch because these uh, inverters draw a little bit of power even though they're turned off. It's like to disconnect it while it's not being used. Charger turned on one more time for one of those quick charges and brought it up to 13.7 and it's been sitting there for the past uh, six hours. So I guess we got our fully charged Red Odo battery. Go ahead and turn this off. 
And we are ready for a test. So let's flip on power to the inverter. 13.8 volts. Looks like we got some power on that switch. Lighted switch there. So, what we got over here is a uh, kind of a mess since I am in this room temporarily. I've got extension cords running everywhere to get power where I need it to. And then we got two separate um, circuits, which I call the heavy loads and the lighter loads. Lighter loads are things like the uh, got the refrigerator, charger for my phone, some low-level lighting for just some some night lights, and uh, we've got our speaker system, and more importantly, the UPS, the battery backup from my PC. Make sure nothing gets damaged while I'm, or while we have uh, power outages. Make sure my PC stays safe. So when power goes out, that's the first thing I do is take this extension cord and run it out the door to a generator, since that's the, that is the most important stuff: the refrigerator and the PC and lighting. Um, we got one piece of Romex coming in from the breaker box, which goes down to two switches, which goes up to a light and to a fan. It goes through a thermostat into a fan, a cooling thermostat, um, and so I won't be able to run the two fluorescent lights in here, but I can run that. I've got a light over on my painting there. The ups goes to the PC and to my gaming system, so if power outage happens in the middle of the game and everything is saved. Um, so that is, yeah, the first thing that gets moved over during a power outage is this cord which goes to this power strip. This other one is a splitter that was already left here so I'm just using it while I'm in this room. That goes off to the charger to this fan. It's uh, something I won't run during a power outage just to save on power. Um, same with the dehumidifier here though. That is something I will run regularly in the RV to keep the moisture down and get a good test. I just want to get an idea for how long this battery goes. I'm sure there'll be, I mean, I'm sure it'll be a noticeable difference. I just want to give it a run for at least one cycle. Um, we've got air conditioner or heater during the winter. Got also my cooktop, toaster. Everything comes off this big extension cord, so that I won't. I, this stuff usually gets run on the generator when I'm in my RV, so I won't hook that stuff back up. But I do want to hook up the dehumidifier. That can go over there. And uh, maybe also the air filter because I, I do like that. It keeps the dust down in these confined spaces. Oh yeah, something that is also powered by my battery backup is the camera system, which I like to have. Let's me see all around the, uh, see, 360 degrees all around my living area just by looking at one monitor. Um, got used to having cameras in the RV, now I kind of like them. So I like to keep that powered, so um, I got this separated so my small generator or inverter can handle all this stuff on the low side and then on the heavy load stuff we save that for the big generator. So to simulate a power outage I can just yank this plug. It's my UPS going off. Most of my lighting has gone out. Uh, I guess that is still on the UPS. Oh, yeah, because we put it on this uh, power center here Only got 20 minutes on the UPS Let's go over here get my main strip There's no heat heater will be used uh, We'll be using a diesel heater for heat So I'm not going to add the heater on the circuit I'm gonna Cord run over Plug it in. Power back on. Pulling. Looks like 230 watts. 200 watts. PC, security cameras, lighting. Oh, and these things are back on. Cheap eBay stuff. But they uh, actually kind of brighten up the room a little bit. I like them. I just, I don't like this. They got really thin. Look how thin that mains cord is. That, would, that should be so illegal. 
if a kid chews on that or a kitten, it'll be bad news. They're not selling them anymore, thankfully. I bought the last one. Um, but yeah, okay, so we got all our, we got our, got some lighting, PC's going, camera system, refrigerator, I could probably run the toaster off of that since we're only at 200 watts, 230, it's bouncing in between there, probably from the PC, thinking about stuff, no lighting to the room, I'll probably plug that back in here in a second, because I can still run power separately from a, a heavier source, like my big generator for running uh, you know, I can use heat, electric heat as a backup source of heat. Um, but I will usually be using uh, diesel fuel for to stay warm in the RV, so I won't worry about adding any loads for heating. The uh, air filter... Okay, I'm just going to leave the air filter on the generator circuit because uh, that's not something I run... I don't need to run that too often. Dehumidifier, though, I like to run that as whenever I'm in the RV, so it pulls the moisture out of the air from my breath, from cooking, and from taking showers, so go ahead and start that up. Alright, now 3.30, between 3.30 and 3.60 watts, this thing isn't very accurate. The wattages are going 30, 30 watt increments. It's a little funky, but it does give you a pretty good idea of what's going on. Cables are staying cool, not drawing too much of a load. So those probably won't even get warm. But that's what I usually draw in my RV. PC, cameras, uh, security cameras, dehumidifier. We'll leave the air filter on the generator circuit since that does not need to be run all the time. Generator circuit will have the battery charger, larger loads like heater, air conditioner, cooktop, toaster, and uh, microwave all go on that. Generator circuit, I can run the microwave off the inverter or the small generator if I turn it way down. Um, but yeah, anyway, there it is all set up just like I would have it in my RV, so we'll give it a good run. I usually don't have the PC going in my RV because that really killed the batteries on the uh with the lead acids so i'll probably turn that off at some point that only is on maybe uh four to six hours a day so i'll, I'll leave that on for four to six hours and shut it off at bedtime give it a good run and let's see what i think so far it's working working good sitting at 13 volts with this load on it you know i might see this for the generator circuit too I really want the battery for lighting, refrigeration, the PC so I can work, uh, and my security cameras, ventilation, other 12-volt accessories. This is a little much for a battery system, I think. It should save this for uh, the generator circuit. But I am worried about moisture in my RV since it is a small space. However, I do have electric vents, so maybe I don't have to run this for a test on this circuit. Red Auto Battery Power! Check out the links below, helps out the channel. Get you a charger, get you a battery. You don't have to get a big one, they got smaller 100 amp hours. They also have some smart batteries now, which are pretty cool. Very nice setup, I got a Tower of Power. Tower of Power. I like it. So I've got my emergency backup from the power outages come. When the snow comes, so do the power outages, like clockwork. Every year. So. Yeah, I like it. Big old red auto battery. With the lead acid batteries, I could watch the volts drop really fast with this much of a load on it. Never liked the PC, nor the uh, refrigeration, dehumidifier type stuff. Fridge is off right now. This thing probably uses as much power as that refrigerator. Yeah, I think... Um, I think that this should stay on the generator circuit, which will save me 100 watts of usage there. All right, gained back a tenth of a volt and got the power usage down to 160 watts just by shutting off that horribly inefficient incandescent bulb, that 60 watt up there. I'll just go ahead and leave that off. The RV lighting is all going to be LED and uh, 
I don't I think that's that's a heavy, that's a pretty heavy load just for lighting so we got this on that is so weird to have the batteries just sit there at a constant voltage with my lead acids doing stuff on the PC uh, I could just sit here and watch the battery volts go down by a tenth of a volt just one tenth at a time one right after the other and uh, I couldn't help but just to keep watching the uh, voltmeter and just watch my capacity dwindle so that is really nice being able to look over and just see a constant 13.2 volts even though I got the PC going some lighting in my uh, camera system here which is not good on power that is freaking awesome I love this I will never go back to lead acid all right, let's see if it makes it through the night. I'll watch some movies and play a couple games. TNT, boom! Blew your arms off. Ha <laughs> ha, yes! This is a good one. Look at this guy trying to bite me. Pulling about 16 and a half amps. And that is with the PC running and a movie going and the camera system. I did plug the circuit for the room back in though, so we have my heat and light, but everything is still. running off the inverter except for those couple things so far so good we are we started at 10 25 p.m it is now 12 49 so a little over two hours playing on the pc and it is still going strong the refrigerator would draw another 1.4 amps it is 161 watts all right it is now 8 35 in the morning and this has gone non-stop for 10 hours with the PC on. That is impressive. I would have never been able to do that with the lead acids. I could get through maybe, I don't know, four hours on the PC before the batteries got down to, and I would have to shut down the PC or turn on the generator. Pretty awesome, I love the lithium. And I'm never going back to the lead acid batteries. This is just very impressive. That lead acid battery bank is actually not even uh, 400 amp hours. It's about 460. According to my install video, I had to go back and look. And that 460 amp hour battery bank, lead acid does not even come close to what this thing does. Really cool. You got the power switched back over. I got a good feeling this could go at least 12 hours. That is pretty dang awesome. No way those lead acids could have gone. Uh, well, I went about four hours using the PC on the lead acids before I had to turn the um, generator on. Even brand new, those lead acids did not even come close to this thing. This pretty dang cool. I love the lithium.
All right, you guys, Red Odo Power. They got a battery and charger for all your needs. They even have these smart batteries now, which is really interesting. Where are those at? Uh, da, 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 da. Smart battery. Pretty handy. You can turn the battery on and off by just a push of a button right at the battery. Allows the user to easily maintain the 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour smart battery. Power on off. Activate the battery from BMS protection and force charging from low temperature charge protection with a one touch button and optimized battery usage with an intuitive LED indicator it provides full life cycle management to the battery got your chargers got your 12 volt batteries your 24 volt batteries 48 volt batteries a size for all your needs check them out redodopower.com links below if you want to help out the channel thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video we got lots coming up